Hello and welcome to my F124 driver career mode here today for part 22 for the Monaco Grand Prix. A race in which we won and was our first win in Formula 1 last season. We ran the final corner then we come up to the line. Our first run wasn't particularly great and we're actually slowest. As we come now towards the end of qualifying this has got to be the pretty good lap to get us up there. We found six tenths on this lap. We're going to round the final corner now, round onto the nose, up to a line, we're being pushed round the final sector, up to a line, and it's a pretty disappointing P17. Let's go the race. A proper road race, and in the true meaning of the word. That's how Mr Monaco, the late great Graham Hill, once described this iconic event. The cars we drive have come a long way in the intervening half century, but we still race on those same public roads beside the Mediterranean. There is no victory more coveted than that of the Monaco Grand Prix. The prestigious Circuit de Monaco then is not all that dissimilar today for the layout that made its debut almost a century ago. It's two miles and 19 corners through the streets of Monte Carlo. And although the average lap speed of around 93 miles per hour is the lowest of the season, the tiny margins for error make it the natural habitat of the safety car. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday, and it's put him on pole. And the smooth operator, Carlos Sainz, completes the front row. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Perez, Oscar Piastri, Hamilton, Verstappen, Norris, Russell, Stroll, Gasly, Ricardo, Sonoda, Ocon, Albon, Fernando Alonso, Hulkenberg, Brown, Sargent, Bottas, and Joe Guan Yu. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. The formation lap gets underway then, and it's going to be interesting today to see how the dry conditions could affect the lifespan of the tyres. come back to the grid to line up for the start of the race. Each driver will be wanting to get the best start they possibly can. And they'll be hoping to finish today's race on the podium, failing that within the points. So it's going to be a long race ahead of us. We're going to have to find a way to overtake Grand Monaco. It's lights out and away we go. And we've got a fairly decent start. It's the Aston and the Haas side by side. We're going to look to go to the inside as we nearly hit the back. Now as we come out of the first corner, the heroics into Santa Vox. As now we head up the hill. We've had to lift there and we've been done by the Sauber. Going round the casino now towards Mirabeau we're just gonna have to absolutely launch it down into Mirabeau that's three four men out side by side with our teammate Albon we've got the job done we're now on the back of the half trying to go down the inside now of the RB off Yuki Sonoda we couldn't quite get the traction on the inside of the hairpin to get the job done on the RB but we've made a good start from P17 and we're looking and smelling some points in the early stages as we've got up to P13. Four places on the open lap, pretty much all of them done at, here at Mirabai. But we're going to send it, we're going to catch Sonoda Nappin, we're going to do what we did on lap one to him. But at this time, yet again, he has the better traction on the outside of the hairpin to keep us behind. Now, as we go through the tunnel, we're getting closer and closer to the back of Yuki Sonoda. We're going to send it late to the inside. And there's nearly contact. Sonoda goes over the over the track, cuts the corner. He has to give us the place there, surely. He's kept the position by going off the track. And then 
I think we pushed a bit too hard earlier on as we go on all the way on to lap 9 and Sonoda really started to pull away and we fell back into those behind as now we skip on all the way on to lap 15 as we have a big moment going into the final corner that's going to leave us vulnerable now to Esteban Ocon in the Alpine he couldn't quite get further enough alongside of us to have a go into Sandovot as now we skip on to the end of lap 17 and this is time for our pit stops then we just fell back from the RB of Yuki Snyder we didn't have the pace to catch him and stick with him and then that was kind of just our race turning to the typical Monaco Grand Prix but the mediums go off the hards go on and now these should get us to the end of the race bearing no safety cars and no crashes and no anything we keep it out of the barriers now can we get the hammer down it's going to be crucial because there is cars out there who are going longer started on the hard tyres and one of them is Joe and you can see the kind of queue behind them now and also Bossas is doing the same strategy as as this is everyone in a lovely queue around the hairpin going so much slower and this is allowing us to catch up and this is actually helping us get on the back of the RBs again who we were struggling and Yuki Zanoda is actually undercut his teammate Daniel Ricciardo who we've done down the inside at Sandovot now can we head up this is a crucial part of the race with the Salvers being slower on the hard tyres to gain some positions because the RB clearly have the pace over us today as now third time lucky surely down the inside at the hairpin we're trying it again Sonoda once again gets the job done now can we get the exit up the inside of Portier no we can't now though can we get the exit we're closer we do it gonna try it again as we head out of the tunnel we're gonna send it down the inside at the Novel chicane there's nearly contact there is contact with Yuki Sonoda but we get the position maybe forced him off the track a little bit but some could argue that he should have given us a position earlier on in the Grand Prix as now as the train continues George Russell is set free from the Sauber as Bottas pits and now I think the field's going to start to spread out a bit again we're on the back now of Pierre Gasly who we fought of trying to get down the inside at Mirabeau but we're going to go for the lunge down the inside of the hairpin we're just trying to get the job done and overtake someone at the hairpin today unlike Sonoda though Gasly couldn't get the exit and we get the job done on him next up now is the Aston Martin of Lance Stroll who nearly, nearly pulled off our classic Monaco move on him as now we head round Mirabeau and towards the hairpin again we're going for the hairpin move again I think there's nearly contact there as we hit the curve quite hard round the outside though job done we're pulling off mega moves at the hairpin today as now we pulled away from Lance Stroll behind and we were kind of just staying in touch with the Mercedes of George Russell now lap 34 just a couple of laps to go round the final corner Lance Charles had a big moment and now he's blocked the track he's hit the barrier and now there's a, a queue that's point. brought out the safety car it's a late safety car it's the first safety car of the season everyone now it's a car park at the final corner as this is Esteban Ocon stuck everyone else has gone through Ocon doing a bit of a three point turn and now is going again Lance Stroll creating so much confusion they're bringing out a safety car late on and now everyone goes through and there's a there's a big engine failure there for the Sauber of Joe Sauber having so many issues this season with reliability that's the third time this season an engine a Ferrari engine in the back of that car has expired and gone bang 
twice now for Bottas in Jeddah and last time out in Japan and now today with Joe his engine's gone and he's still going his engine went at the first corner and he's completed about half a lap here and now he's stopped in the middle of the track he's blocked off the house behind the our teammate Albon behind and he's just stopped and at the end of lap 38 the safety okay, car is go. in go we're going again. to have one racing lap to conclude this Monaco Grand Prix has been a pretty good comeback drive for us we're currently P9 can we make it P8 could we get George Russell on this final lap as Charles Leclerc leading the race is really back to all up we've nearly been done by the Alpine of Gasly behind us and we've been massively caught out and caught sleeping on the restart George Russell has gone and I think we're going to be too far back to have any sort of chance of overtaking him on the rest of this lap we're going to go for it though at the chicane we're at the inside we're too far back to do anything on the Mercedes and that may be that but this man Charles Leclerc like he did in real life is going to win at home Charles Leclerc wins the Monaco Grand Prix Carlos Sainz comes over P2 and we come home for a great P9 drive what a driver Charles Leclerc takes the victory taking victory at their home circuit as well what a place to do it the fans are loving it they're lapping it up they have been all weekend long and they have delivered what the fans wanted to see looking at the podium you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe a world-class win for a world-class team Ferrari do it again So that's been your Monaco Grand Prix won by the home hero Charles Leclerc and the first non-Max Verstappen win of the season. He's finished down in P6. Carlos Sainz following his former teammate home for P2 and Oscar Piastri gets on the podium as well. Lewis Hamilton gets his best result as well in P5 for Ferrari just behind Sergio Perez for us P9 after starting P17 I don't think that's a bad race at all round here of course it's not the win that we got last season a very different race this year it's points once again and after Japan to get back in the points it's a pretty good day we kind of did get we kind of did get helped out a bit with the salvage strategy going longer on the hards it allowed us to catch back up to those who we'd fallen a long way back behind of Albon got caught up in the stroll incident and then got caught up again when Joe just decided to stop in the middle of the track bit of a shocking day for Alex in terms of the drivers championship then Max Verstappen continues to lead Lando Norris is P2 some 27 points back Charles Leclerc is P3 Oscar Piastri P4 and we have dropped from P3 in the first race of the season back in Jeddah all the way down to P6 but I never expected to say towards the front uh, Williams isn't really there we are a point in front of Sergio Perez going into the next race and then down at the back there's still a couple of drivers still yet to score that being Bottas, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, Sargent and Joe who is bottom of the pile. In terms of the constructors then and Red Bull continue to lead. The gap though only just three points over McLaren. Ferrari have moved up into P3. They've jumped Mercedes and us. We were level on points with Merck coming into this weekend. We've dropped back quite a bit now from the Mercedes. We've dropped to P5 and we're just four points ahead of Aston Martin in P3 six and then there's still two teams still at to score that being Sauber and Haas are 
bottom. So that's been your Monaco Grand Prix weekend. A bit of a comeback drive from us. You can overtake in Monaco if you're prepared to take the risk. But I hope you enjoyed the race. We go to my favourite track on the Formula 1 calendar next in Canada. Goodbye.